In this video, I'm going to be unboxing a bunch of my engineering exams to give you an idea of what you can expect out of engineering. And if you're new here, my name is Tamer and I'm a final year engineering student at the University of Waterloo. In this video, I'll go over four exams. A first year chemistry course, a calculus course, a second year mechanical engineering course called Mechanics of Deformable Solids, and an engineering material science course. I'll show you what you can expect out of your engineering exams, what your questions can look like, and what your solutions should look like. These exams are a good demonstration of what your actual exams will be like in your first, second, or third year of your engineering undergrad. Let's start off by having a look at my first year chemistry course. When I enter the exam room, I already have an assigned seat and I'm allowed to bring with me a calculator and a double-sided piece of paper of my study notes. This is what my study notes look like. It was essentially a double-sided sheet of paper that contained all the information that was taught in my chemistry course. All the equations, diagrams, and charts that I needed were in here. This exam was entirely multiple choice and came with a Scantron card that allowed me to fill in my answers. This exam was a two and a half hour long exam and contained 11 multiple choice questions and 20 true and false questions. Moving on to the second page, this exam came with a bunch of conversion factors, constants, and equations that I would need to answer the questions in this paper. So although I was allowed to bring this study sheet, I ended up not using it since everything I needed was already given to me. But creating this study sheet helped me study, so it wasn't a total waste of time. Alongside the question sheet, I was given this examination booklet that I used to record all my solutions to the questions being asked. Now let's have a look at the actual questions of the exam. The multiple choice questions were each worth 10 marks and it's either you get the full 10 marks if you get the correct answer or zero marks if you get it wrong. There were no part marks for this exam. This made it really stressful because one small mathematical error will mean I get the answer completely wrong and lose 10 marks. The first two questions you see here were applying basic chemistry concepts. Once you read the question, you recall the equation that you need to use and do some basic algebra and rearranging to get your answer. The next five questions are all true and false about this diagram. Question eight was a long question asking us to find pressure in this cylinder. So I had to break it down into steps and use several equations to find the answer. Then I had some true and false questions about this chemical equation. You'll notice that a lot of these questions use basic math and algebra to find the answer. You'll also notice that this exam had over 30 questions that I needed to solve in two and a half hours. So I always made sure to spend a specific amount of time for each question. For example, questions that were worth about 10 marks, I would spend no more than 10 minutes on them. And questions that were worth around two marks, I would spend no more than two minutes on them. That way I can make sure to complete the entire exam, which was worth 150 marks in 150 minutes. Next, let's have a look at this advanced calculus final. I had two and a half hours for this exam. I was allowed to bring a calculator and I was allowed to bring a study sheet. Again, this sheet included the information I needed to be able to answer the exam questions. This exam had five questions and was worth a total of 55 marks. The first question involved using equations to create a 3D shape. The question asks us to find the diameter of the shaded hole, so by using these equations and integration, we can find the diameter. In the second question, again, we use concepts like derivatives and integrals and other mathematical concepts to find the surface area of this 3D shape. And the same applies to the third, fourth, and fifth questions. In general, exams aren't supposed to be too hard because most of them just require you to look at a formula sheet, figure out the correct equation to use, and use that to solve the question. You don't actually need to have a deep understanding of the mathematical concepts. But that being said, this exam was actually quite difficult. And what the professor ended up doing as well could bring the grades upwards because everyone did so poorly. Next, let's have a look at a mechanical engineering course that I took in the summer of 2018. This course was called Mechanics of Deformable Solids or MODS for short. And if you're unfamiliar with what MODS is, it's just physics. And it was honestly one of my favorite courses in mechanical engineering just because of how practical it is. This exam had three questions and was worth 100 marks. We were given this booklet to include all our final solutions, and thankfully this exam had part marks, so if I get a wrong answer, I don't just get zero on the question, but I'll get part marks for the work that I've shown. The first question says that you basically have a shaft that's attached to the wall and there are a bunch of forces and torques acting on it in all directions. The question asks to find how much stress is acting at certain points on the shaft. This is actually a pretty practical question in engineering because let's say you have a shaft that makes up the chassis of a car which holds the car together and provides it with structural stability. You will have to use concepts from this question to make sure that the shafts in the chassis of a car can withstand the loads that are being applied to it and prevent it from failing. 
So the solution to this question was actually pretty long and involved using a lot of physics concepts to answer it. I always like to break down my solutions into steps so the person marking can easily follow it and give me as much part marks as possible. You can see here I start off by drawing diagrams to visualize the question better and I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to show my entire work process. And because this question is worth around 40 marks, I aim to finish it in just under 40 minutes. The second question tells us that we have a beam attached to a wall and asks us to find the stress acting at certain points along the beam. So I use a lot of equations and basic physics concepts to solve this question. My work here is pretty messy because I was trying to get this question done in 30 minutes but it was taking me a little bit longer. The third question is similar to the second one in that we had a wooden beam attached to the wall. The beam was held together by nails and some glue so the question asks us if the nails and glue will fail. We also had to calculate the maximum stress or loading that this beam can handle before it fails. Again this is a pretty practical question you can probably see how you can apply something like this in real life. For example, beams that you'll find in construction sites need to be able to withstand a large amount of load. So being able to do calculations like these and understanding these kind of calculations is really important. However, in the real world, obviously most of these calculations are done using software and nothing is actually done by hand, but I still think it's important to understand how everything works and the math behind the software. Anyways, to solve this question, I sketched up some diagrams and broke down my solution into several steps. Even though this exam was only 3 questions, it still took me a very long time and I barely had enough time to finish it. At the end of my exam, I even added a little note asking the grader to go easy when marking the exam. And I think it actually worked because I ended up getting an 80% on it which was a lot better than I expected. Finally, let's talk about my materials science exam. This exam was closed book and I was not allowed to bring a study sheet like the other exams. And that sucked because all the other exams used mathematical equations so I didn't really even need the study sheet. But this one was really wordy and had a lot of explanations and concepts that I needed to memorize and understand. So a study sheet would have been really helpful in this exam. I also love how they included answer all questions on the sheet like <laughs> where else would I answer it. Anyways the first page involved a bunch of multiple choice questions. And I'll be honest with you, I studied really hard for this exam, but I still found that the multiple choice questions had absolutely nothing to do with what was taught and it was really different than the notes that I took for this course. But hey, I still managed to get half of them right. The second question basically asked us if you have a piece of iron and you don't want it to rust or corrode, would it be better to coat it with cobalt or nickel? To answer this question, I had to use this diagram, some basic math, and explain my thoughts in words. The third question asked us to use this diagram which is known as a phase diagram of a compound made up of silver and titanium. We were expected to use this diagram to discuss how the material would react under certain environmental conditions. The fourth question told us that we have a piece of iron wire and based on the environment it's in, how long do we expect this wire to last? Luckily the solution to this question wasn't too wordy and just had to use a basic equation to estimate the lifetime of this wire. Finally, the last question of this exam asked us to discuss several ways that nuts and bolts can corrode over time and what we can do to prevent corrosion from happening. You'll notice that this exam, as long and hard as it might have been, it was actually really practical because it's so important to understand how these materials work and how they operate in certain environmental conditions because that allows us to design better products. For example, when designing this iPhone, understanding the material science behind it allows you to build something that's aesthetic, doesn't corrode, and easy to manufacture or build. I ended up getting a 75% on this exam which honestly wasn't too bad since I actually thought I did a lot worse. Over the last 5 years of engineering I think I've done over a hundred different exams but I only showed you 4 in this video. Hopefully this gave you an idea of what to expect on your exams once you get into engineering. Some of the stuff you learn in engineering is practical but some of it is also completely abstract and you'll never use again in your life. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!